Insight is a community service of the New York Institute of Technology. Covering the news of Nassau and Suffolk County's Long Island News Tonight with Ken Eckhart, Carol Pack, and the award-winning Ally News Team. Good evening. I'm Ken Eckhart, and here's what's happening. If you stop by McDonald's today, you might have left with more than just a happy meal. You might have left with a job. It's National Hiring Day at McDonald's, and the fast food chain said it was hoping to sign up 50,000 new workers. The fast food chain says it's offering jobs, including part-time and full-time, with flexible schedules and benefits. And it says the jobs can lead to satisfying careers. The company says as sales increase, the company is also adding to its staff. Well, the first new guidelines for diagnosing Alzheimer's disease in nearly 30 years may help pave the way for improvements. The guidelines establish earlier stages of the disease, reflecting a modern view that Alzheimer's is a spectrum of mental decline with damage that can start many years before actual symptoms appear. But despite the hoopla about new brain scans and blood and spinal fluid tests that claim to show early signs of Alzheimer's, the guidelines say they are not ready for prime time and should remain just tools for research. And doctors shouldn't change how they evaluate and treat patients for now. About 5.4 million Americans and more than 26 million people worldwide have Alzheimer's. As more and more young people join the ranks of the obese, parents are being urged to get involved and take charge of what their youngsters eat. Elsa Gillis reports. Childhood obesity has more than tripled in the past 30 years, according to the Center for Disease Control. It reports 64% of high school students don't meet recommended levels of physical activity and says the costs of treating obesity-related diseases are rising rapidly. Stop and Shop in West Hempstead hosted a community forum on childhood obesity to help raise awareness of the problem and provide guidance for fixing it. When you look at kids who are obese, their quality of life is as bad as that of somebody who has a really serious chronic illness. They are at greater risk to develop adult health problems, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, strokes, and several types of cancer and osteoarthritis. Dr. Renee Bargman projects that this generation of children will have a shorter lifespan than their parents and attributes that to problems with childhood obesity. And these panelists say what we as a society can do to turn these statistics around. The way to start is uh, what we've put out here today. A healthy meal in the morning, a healthy lifestyle during the day, good amount of sleep. Make half of the plate fruits and vegetables. It's really going to take a multi-component approach um, to tackling these issues of overweight and obesity that are going to involve a combination of family-based as well as school-based interventions. And panelists say prevention should begin before children are even born. Research has shown us that Mothers who um, have excessive weight gain during their pregnancy also put their children at risk of becoming overweight and obese. And in terms of physical activity... Start with what people like. It has to be fun. In West Hempstead, Elsa Gillis, LI News Tonight. Police say some alert neighbors helped catch a burglar in another resident's room. Detectives say a neighbor told police he heard noises yesterday morning in the room of another resident who lived at the same building he did, who was out at work at the time. The neighbor knew the resident wasn't home, so he and another tenant went to the room and opened the door to investigate. That's when police say they found 24-year-old Halmar Claros Mendez in the room, and they held him until police arrived. Police say two boxes of perfume belonging to the victim were found in Claros Mendez's backpack. Well, spring is often thought of as a time of renewal. And as Jody Goldberg reports, one way to get a fresh start this season is with a little spring cleaning and decluttering. It's time to open your doors and windows and let in the fresh air. Spring cleaning is an annual ritual for many. And according to Michael Miller, owner of a cleaning service in Nassau County called The Maids, 
April is a great time for people to freshen up their homes. Everybody loves to have a clean home that smells fresh without dust. One way to begin the cleaning process is by starting outdoors. During the uh, spring, you would want to uh, freshen up the outside mat that you have outside. He recommends paying attention to surfaces that you don't clean on a regular basis, like computer keyboards, the base of a toilet bowl, and even light switches that can collect bacteria. According to professional organizers, taking control of paperwork or storing winter clothes and accessories also helps you make the transition to spring. Organizer Eileen Koff says the spring cleaning process takes time. It's going to take an afternoon or a weekend or a week. And Koff says spring cleaning is about changing your perspective and your priorities. And she adds that it's best to start out with one area, like this closet. But no matter how difficult the task is, it shouldn't be overwhelming. It's about prioritizing. She suggests doing what you think is most important first and working your way down your to-do list. For LI News Tonight, Jody Goldberg reporting. A California woman is suing a popular internet dating site, saying she was sexually assaulted by a man she met on Match.com. The woman reportedly met the alleged assailant last year at a cafe in West Hollywood, and after a second date... Her attorney says the man followed her home and attacked her. The suit demands that Match.com screen its members for sexual predators. The woman's attorney says he's asking for a temporary injunction barring the site from signing up more members until his client's demands are met. Well, it was an up day on Wall Street today. The Dow finished the day up over 65 points. NASDAQ was up 9.5 points. And the S&P was up seven and a half points. NYIT's LI News Tonight continues after this. See a screening of the film The Last Detail at New York Institute of Technology's D. Seversky Center in Old Westbury on Wednesday, April 27th at 5.30 p.m. For more information, call 516-686-7567. Celebrate the 41st anniversary of Earth Day at the Hexter State Park Spring Festival in East Islip on Saturday, April 30th and Sunday, May 1st from 11 a.m. till 4 p.m. For more information, call 631-321-3510. There's an Arbor Day Family Festival at Planting Fields Arboretum State Historic Park in Oyster Bay on Saturday, April 30th and Sunday, May 1st from 10 a.m. till 5 p.m. For more information, call 516-922-8676. Or walk to remember the children killed in the Holocaust at the Wellwyn Preserve in Glen Cove on Sunday, May 1st at 10 a.m. For more information, call 516-571-8040. If you have an event you'd like included on the LI News Tonight community calendar, Send it to LINewsTonight at nyit.edu. Press play to start your future. Learn the industry. Use the technology. Become an expert in television reporting. Journalism. Radio. digital film, public relations and advertising, television production, digital graphics, a beautiful state-of-the-art campus, a road to the job you've always wanted in the media capital of the world. Communication Arts at NYIT. When can you start? Some headlines around the world today. Workers at Japan's crippled nuclear power plant are trying to pump some 25,000 tons of radioactive water from the basement of a turbine building. They're hoping once the water is pumped, they'll be able to access cooling systems that were knocked out in last month's tsunami. Tokyo Electric Power Company projected over the weekend that it would take up to nine months to reach a cold shutdown of the plant. The Egyptian government says over 800 people were killed. 
during the recent uprising that toppled longtime President Hosni Mubarak. The totals were gathered by a government fact-finding mission that described as excessive the force used by security forces in the face of that growing mass protest back in January. The report said that security forces fired live ammunition, placed snipers on rooftops, and used vehicles to run over protesters. It added that more than 6,400 people were injured. And Fidel Castro has not been included in Cuba's Communist Party leadership for the first time since its creation more than four decades ago. His brother, Raul Castro, has been named first secretary of the party. There had been hope that a new generation of leaders would be taking up important party positions, but instead it was announced today that Raul Castro's 80-year-old longtime confidant, Jose Ramon Mercado Ventura, would be his number two man, and the 78-year-old vice president, Ramiro Valdez, was named to the number three spot. But Al Castro did make a surprise appearance at the gathering in Havana, earning a thunderous applause from the crowd. A Long Island school superintendent says students who have an opportunity to express themselves through art usually study harder and stay in school longer than children who don't. And as Tara Evans reports, artwork by students in that district is now on display at a Long Island museum. It's not every day an artist gets to see their work displayed in a museum. But for 30 elementary students from the Elmont School District, that's exactly what happened recently at the Long Island Children's Museum in Garden City. This is the sixth year in a row the district has an exhibit there. And the students say seeing their work on display makes them feel great. It makes me feel pretty excited because I'm actually going to get realized in a museum. I never had my picture hung up anywhere, except in my school hallways. I like it, how they complimented when I showed them my artwork. I was surprised at first because I've never been chosen to display my art, so I was happy about it. Not only do students say that creating wonderful artwork like this makes them feel good, but they say it also makes learning more fun. And we were learning about the human body and how to blend different colors to make another color, so that's where I got the idea from. We're actually learning about Egypt right now. I was inspired about the mummy process and all that, so this was really like, oh my gosh. And that enthusiasm for learning and the arts is why Elmont Superintendent Al Harper says the district has continued this exhibit year after year. And he says that's why keeping our programs in schools is so important. Children have those opportunities. They tend to study harder. They tend to be in school a little bit longer. And so we want to support those arts, not only for those individual talents, but to make sure that we support those children academically and make sure we produce a well-rounded child. The student's art will be on display at the museum through the end of the month. In Garden City, Tara Evans, LI News Tonight. The biggest version yet of Boeing's Jumbo 747 airliner could soon be flying into airports that have never seen aircraft that large before. Airports from Rockford, Illinois to Huntsville, Alabama are asking the FAA for waivers so they can receive the new Boeing 747-8 cargo plane. 27 airports in all are seeking approval to handle the plane in hopes of grabbing a bigger share of the growing market for air cargo. The new Boeing falls into the biggest category of commercial aircraft. The passenger version will compete with the mammoth Airbus A380. Well, we had a mostly cloudy day today. There were a few scattered showers. Today's high was in the mid-50s. Tonight, showers continuing with a low in the upper 40s. Tomorrow, isolated thunderstorms, but a bit milder with highs in the low 60s. Thursday, mostly sunny with a high in the upper 50s. Friday, skies turning cloudy again with a high in the upper 50s. And the outlook for Saturday, rain expected a high in the low 60s. And that's it for NYIT's LI News Tonight. I'm Ken Eckhart. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow. Have a good night.